Ever notice that when you were younger and you ate sugar, you'd actually get energy from the sugar. Like think about a kid, they have sugar and then they go bouncing off the walls and have energy. But you have sugar after like 30, then all of a sudden you crash from it. You don't even get the energy boost. You get like a little dopamine hit and then wham, you crash. Here's a riddle. What's the quickest way for Thomas DeLauer to lose as many followers as possible? Talk about using sugar for fat loss. Okay, now I'm partially joking, but the reality is, is that there's this thing out there right now that people are kind of talking about. It's called the sugar diet, and it's an actual real thing, but you gotta hear me out on this because first of all, this is not something I'm necessarily doing, but there is legit scientific merit behind it. However, it's pretty ambiguous the way that people are really going about it and talking about it, and we need to kind of understand what's happening here before we just jump right in to eating hundreds of grams of sugar because there's some prerequisites and there's some things that people need to know first. Now, speaking of good quality sugar and carbohydrates, I put a link down below for Manukora Manuka Honey. This is the smoothest, the best honey that I have ever had, hands down. Okay, it's harvested from bees in the forests of New Zealand, so this stuff is legit. Okay, it has some of the highest MGO content of any Manuka honey that's out there. So it has these awesome antimicrobial benefits. It has, of course, the traditional antioxidant benefits. Really good quality stuff. And the neat thing is, is whether you're doing a higher carb or lower carb protocol, you only need a teaspoon or two of this stuff, a literal teaspoon to get the actual benefit as far as antioxidants and MGO is concerned. So I popped a link down below for Manukora so you can get a starter pack, which has a tub of the 850 MGO honey, along with five stick packs, they're travel packs, a spoon and a guide on how to use it and structure it properly. So that link is down below. Go to manukora.com slash delour20. Manukora.com slash delour20. Trust me, it's the smoothest, most best tasting honey I've ever had. Now, if you haven't unsubscribed already, just hear me out on this whole thing because this isn't just like some weird in the weeds stuff. Here's an example. You ever notice that people that are younger or maybe when you were younger, you could eat a bunch of sugar and the sugar would actually give you energy. Now when you eat sugar, it makes you tired. Well, the reason that that happens is this thing called FGF21. And as we get older, we actually become FGF21 resistant. So we're seeing people using this sugar diet lately. And now not everyone is really doing it properly because there's some really important things to know with it, but the premise is to elevate your levels of FGF21. Now this FGF21 is a messenger molecule that signals your body to produce more energy and also release heat. And we've seen it in multiple animal studies and some human model data that when FGF21 elevates, there's pretty significant weight loss. In fact, one of the landmark rodent model studies on this was really interesting because they had subjects, in this case rodents, consuming pure sucrose compared to other diets, and the pure sucrose diet actually lost significantly more weight than any other diet. Okay, and their FGF21 levels were elevated, and that was probably the reason why. So does that mean that everyone should just go have a bunch of sugar? I mean, the thing is, is this isn't an easy diet to do. It's not like it's something you would want to do for a long period of time. It's more like sugar fasting, where you are keeping fats ridiculously low, keeping sugar pretty dang high, and then having just enough protein maybe towards the end of the day to stave off any additional catabolism. But what we have to remember here is two really, really, really important things. The first thing that I talked about earlier, which is as you get older, you don't respond to FGF21 the same. You become resistant to it. So FGF21 levels will still increase, but they won't actually bind at the tissue level to get you the desired outcome. You're not gonna get this extreme energy. You're not gonna get this like burning feeling, right? Because what's happening is typically, if FGF21 is binding properly, What's happening is it's increasing uncoupling and it's increasing uh, energy expenditure. So you find that like if everything is functioning perfectly and you did this sugar thing, you would have abundant energy and you'd wanna sprint and you'd wanna work out and you'd wanna lift and you'd wanna move, okay? 
But you can probably look at yourself and a lot of people you know that think, if I did that, I would crash. I would not have energy. And there's a very good reason for that. One, you could be older and it's just not hitting you the same way like it did when you were in your 20s or teens or a kid. But the biggest one is, and we have to look at a study that comes from a first study published in diabetes, where lean people and obese people responded tremendously different when it came down to FGF21. Okay, so FGF21 in lean individuals worked the way that we would think it would work. It would actually increase uncoupling, it would increase heat, and it would increase energy expenditure significantly, like massively. Okay, in overweight or obese people, it did not. It did not do the same thing. So with that, we turn to another study. This was published in the journal Obesity and Diabetes Metabolism. So this looked at people with type 2 diabetes and people that were overweight or obese. And what they found is that the same sort of thing, FGF21 was increased and they could actually identify as sort of a predetermining marker that if FGF21 was high, they could almost guarantee that they were going to be high BMI or type 2 diabetic with so much certainty that it was like an actual good marker to look at. The reason is, is because the FGF21 in a metabolically unhealthy person does not bind the tissue level properly. So you have to have this complete circuit. So let's just say you've got a perfect situation with like a really metabolically healthy, like someone in their 20s. If they were to drop their fats and increase their sugar intake, it would actually give them energy and they would probably end up expending more than they consume and they would probably lose weight. And there's actually some other benefits that come from it. But again, this diet is not easy. I mean, we're talking eating like no fat and sucrose. It can't just be like rice. You can't be doing starches. They actually did this in rodent model studies where they compared starches, low fat starches versus sucrose. It needed to be sucrose. So it almost has to be sugar. Now, the other side of the situation is that you really need to be in a deficit for it to work. I mean, you probably could get away with not being in a deficit and it would work, but more so, if you're in a deficit and your fats are super, super low, you're gonna burn some serious fat. There's no denying that dietary fat stores easily. It does. Dietary fat stores pretty easily and sugar has to go through lots of different steps to turn into fat. Where sugar becomes more fattening is in the sense that sugar spikes your insulin, which stands in the way of lipolysis. But if your calories are so low and you're still having adequate amount of time between meals, this could really stimulate some serious fat loss for people. Now the other side of the equation is where does protein come in? Protein, realistically, on an FGF21 spiking kind of sugar fast, shouldn't really exist. It should just be high sugar. And that would mean that, like, where does the protein come in? And aren't you going to catabolize? I mean, we have to remember that sugar, or at least carbohydrates in general, are extremely anti-catabolic because insulin is anti-catabolic. But in order to really achieve any sort of muscle-preserving status from it whatsoever, you have to consistently be consuming it, like at least probably every couple hours and just consuming high amounts of sugar and then maybe just stacking your protein towards the end of the day. A good example is Mark Bell. Like Mark Bell's been trying this for the last little while and he's a tremendous success. This is my breakfast. I had some Sour Patch Kids, Starburst, jelly beans, eight ounces of apple juice. And he hasn't seen much of a negative change in his markers, but he's also healthy. So here's one of the most important things to note. This sugar type fasting or FGF21 approach could work really, really well if you are already fit, already athletic, and already lean, okay? That is like the people that are doing it right now have experience and are somewhat metabolically healthy, and they're having good success with it. Could you run a serious risk by doing it if you are metabolically unhealthy? I could argue yes. I think there's other people in even the evidence-based community that would say as long as calories are lower, like, you're probably gonna be okay. And I think you'd be okay, but I don't think it's something you wanna do long-term. So I don't want you to hold my feet to the fire on this. I'm not saying that this is the way to go, but if you are really, really fit already and you're like, hey, I wanna lean out even more or I wanna try something that's gonna give me extra energy, because it will if you're already healthy, then it might be worth trying, but it's worth trying properly, right? And I would suggest doing it for maybe one to two week periods where you're keeping fat almost at zero and then you're keeping protein at about one, maybe 0 0.5 to 0.75, one on the high end grams per pound of body weight stacked at the end of the day, right? So you're like having to really backload all of your protein towards the end of the day 
and really consume a lot of sugar. Now, how much sugar are you looking at? You probably want to be upwards of 200 grams, right? The good news is you could get some of this from honey, but honey has a good amount of fructose too. You'd probably want to get it straight up from as pure sucrose as you can. So look for fruits that are higher sucrose, right? You want to look for any food that's high sucrose. Unfortunately, most people would just go to like processed candy and things like that. I mean, there are some ways that you could get maybe a little bit more of a cleaner sugar that's pure sucrose. You could do a quick Google search on that. So if you want me to do more videos on how to like do this and how to structure it, I'm happy to. And it's something that I might try for like one or two days out of the week for a little while just to kind of see what it does because I'm all about experimenting. But just remember, if you're metabolically unhealthy, it's not the best choice. So as always, keep it locked in here on my channel. See you tomorrow.